Being triggered by your jealousy in public is such a difficult feeling. You're just trying to have a good time with your partner, you're trying to make memories, but for whatever reason your anxiety and your paranoia gets the best of you and you start to get easily triggered by your jealousy in public. And it's to the point where you're analyzing every single direction they're looking, you're analyzing every micro detail that goes into hanging out with them, you're observing their behavior down to the T, and it's making you feel like you're in some FBI CSI episode trying to break down the behavior of your partner when you should just be having a good time with them. And you're trying your hardest to be present, but you feel like things aren't adding up and you feel threatened in every corner you turn to, to the point where you're just convincing your partner that you shouldn't even go out anymore. That's it, calling it quits, you're packing it up and you're going home and you're staying inside forever. If this is you, I am going to go over five extremely helpful tips that helped me get over all of this anxiety and paranoia when I go out in public with my partner. I have been there before and I know it's such an embarrassing feeling sometimes and it's really defeating. Defeating that you can't just go out in public and have a good time with your partner when that's all you want to do. You want to grow and you want to build something loving and nurturing with your partner, but you just can't because of this jealousy that's triggering you everywhere you go. And so you're trying to figure out what do you do? So let's go over how to fix that. If you're new to my channel, hi, hello, my name is Vero. I teach you all how to glow, grow, and thrive from those toxic relationships and trauma in your life. So let's start healing together. So starting off with tip number one, the most important thing is to be prepared. This is something that I didn't even think of when I went out in public. I just always felt like I had to be the better person. I just always felt like I had to just be in control of myself wherever I went and it didn't matter what was going on and it was shameful if I reacted or I just beat myself up and think all these negative thoughts if I were to get triggered or feel jealous because I always kept asking what's wrong with me? Why do I feel this way? What's going on? But I didn't realize and I came to realize most recently actually to prevent yourself from being triggered is to know that you will be triggered. So let me explain. Let's say you're going to a place where you know you'll feel triggered. Say it's someone's birthday party, or you're going out for drinks in a very public space, or you're going to the gym and you know there's going to be a lot of people there. If you know you're going to a place where it's going to cause you a bit of anxiety, the answer is not to avoid the place. The answer is not to tell your partner not to go there because one, that is super controlling and two, you don't want to manipulate the relationship and start off or build your relationship on this manipulative foundation. What you want to do is before you go out, be so aware that these places are going to trigger you. Make a list of the places that you feel most triggered at and just know that that's going to happen. The awareness of the situation and the awareness of your feelings really takes you out of feeling them in a way. It separates yourself from the feeling so you know how to recognize it, you know how to spot it, and you're very mindful of when it's going to happen because you already know what's going to happen. So when you get triggered by jealousy, when your anxiety hits, and when your paranoia hits, you're like, oh, I already know that this is gonna happen. You know what, it's not as bad as I thought. Being aware of how you're going to react, going to these places is a huge step into controlling and applying the next couple of steps that I'm going to go over. It is a huge factor for your success and being able to control your triggers, handle your anxiety, and calm yourself down. Number two is having a really strong mantra to tell yourself over and over and over again when you do get triggered. So mine is, I am safe, I trust my partner. And you're going to sound like you're chanting a spell, resurrecting something from the depths of whatever in the universe whatever it takes to be able to calm your jealousy you need that in your toolkit and mine is repeating a mantra that will help me feel secure over and over and over again regardless of how ridiculous it might make me look take a moment to pull yourself out of the situation maybe find yourself a corner go behind a door go inside the bathroom find a way to just pause and say these words to yourself I am safe I trust my partner I am safe I trust my partner I am safe, I trust my partner. 
These mantras will help shift your mind into challenging the thought, essentially convincing yourself that you are safe and convincing yourself to believe what you're saying is stronger than you think. It's like what they say with motivation, you don't actually have it, you have to bring yourself to be motivated. You just have to do it. So this is the same mentality. You just have to say that you are safe. You have to say that you trust your partner. It'll break your thinking pattern. It'll break that chain of thought of anxiety and help you calm down if just for a moment. Now tip number three is something I continually do and practice when I'm in therapy, when I'm by myself, and this is something I encourage you to continually do as well. Talking to that part of yourself that is easily triggered. There is a point in your life where something bad happened, where you felt betrayed, where something really devastating happened to you that made you question your trust in people. Maybe this is the reason why you don't trust easily. Maybe this is the reason why you get so triggered. You have to talk to that version of yourself and comfort them, make them feel safe. It's really important to open that conversation with yourself and know that you'll be there for them. Whether it was extremely long ago when you were little, whether it be when you were a young adult, just sit down and have a conversation with yourself. What it does again is it takes you away from the emotion and it gives that emotion a name. It gives that emotion the persona of someone to talk to. Because again, a lot of the times it's not yourself wanting to react, it's your defense mechanisms. It's what you've learned over time to be able to protect yourself, which is why you're triggered that way. So when you separate yourself and talk to yourself and have these conversations regularly, whether it be every night, every morning, on the drive to work. An example of a conversation might be, hey, we were just at the gym and we felt really uncomfortable. I wonder why that is. Can you tell me why? And you break down the points of why you were feeling that way. You really dissect where that feeling is coming from and it lets you challenge the thought even more as to why these feelings are coming up for you. And trust me, it's such a therapeutic experience and I promise it'll help you when you take yourself out of the feeling. Tip number four may be a hard tip to accept because I personally also have a difficult time wrapping my brain around this, but it is the truth nonetheless. We need to manage our expectations and be realistic with ourselves. And what I mean by that is, is it really realistic to deny the fact that other people may be attracted to our partner? Is it really healthy to control their every move, tell them what they can do, tell them what they can't do, spy on everything they're doing, make you lose hours of sleep in your day because you are freaking out over this. The truth is and the reality of it is that your partner is their own self and people will find them attractive. It is not their fault. The reason you were attracted to them is probably the reason other people are attracted to them too. And we need to accept that reality. The sooner we grasp that reality and the sooner we try to stop controlling things that are not within our control, we start to gain control of ourselves. Let that sink in. Try not to control the things that you can't control because inevitably you're just going to spiral into a whole mess of emotions that are messy and negative and you don't want that because it just continues to trigger your anxiety and it's just a choo-choo train of jealousy and continual triggers. This may take a while to get comfortable with because obviously it's in your head and you get anxious thinking about that, but as long as you have a trusting partner, as long as they give you no reason to doubt them. You really have no reason to control that. It is not their job to do your bidding and be able to avoid every situation because you're the one who feels this way. It's just a reality to accept. Your partners are attractive. Other people are going to find them attractive. That's the reality of it. You can't be perfect and you can't control the situation and you cannot play mind games with them trying to tell them what they can or can't do. And the fifth most powerful tip is to be kind to yourself. I go over this a lot in past videos, but the power of being kind to yourself is really, really strong and it will help you in this situation when you're feeling triggered in public. So when you do feel triggered in public because of your jealousy or when you feel paranoid, don't beat yourself up for this. Again, the reason why we feel this way is because it's a defense mechanism that we've learned from being hurt. It's not our fault that we got hurt. We, at the end of the day, didn't ask 
to feel this way. We adapted to our environment so that we could prevent ourselves from being hurt again. Yes, it can be defeating if you do feel it time and time again. Trust me, I have been there for many, 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 many years. Believe me, it doesn't take you anywhere if you continue to beat yourself up and you continue to blame yourself for feeling the way you feel. This tip goes really well with the previous tip of talking to your past self that was hurt. Talking to yourself in that point of time where you were traumatized, where you were really hurt. They are scared. They need protection. And what better way to give them a safe space by being kind to them? You owe it to yourself to be kind to yourself when you feel this way. I hope these tips really help you when you do get triggered in public with your partner. It really helps grow the relationship and nurture the relationship if you do practice these tips and you do work on yourself to be able to control these triggers better. Other than that, I wish you all the best in your healing journey. Thank you so much for watching my videos and thank you so much for your support. I look forward to making more videos for you and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!